What's up everybody, Tony here with High Tech Check, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Acasis Type-C docking station. Now there are no doubt a ton of do docking stations out there available. The one thing that makes this stand out is the fact that it has a slot for an NVMe drive or an M.2 SSD. So you won't have to use up a couple different ports on your computer. You get everything pretty much all in one, and this has 10 different uh, connections to it so it gives you a multitude of different things that you can connect all through one connection now this is up for Kickstarter right now I will put, be putting a link in case you guys want to uh, check that out yourself and support them and if you guys like me and you want to support my channel please use those links because it helps me keep purchasing products to do reviews for you guys so I will be doing a test uh, with the stocking station using the N, uh, WD Black SN750 NVMe. This is a one terabyte. This docking station is capable of doing up to eight terabytes for an SSD, which is uh, a lot in it. Like I said, it accommodates NVMe's and the M.2 SSD. So let's go ahead and see what you get inside the box and go over some of the specs. Okay, so it looks like you get a USB Type-C to USB Type-C cable. And here's the dock itself. It is not big at all. It's uh, pretty slim. It's got some nice uh, rubber feet on the bottom here. And if we take a look at the top, here you can see you have your uh, SD card slot and a micro, micro USD card slot. You have a spot for a headphone jack. You have a USB uh, Type-C 3.1. We have a USB 3.1 and a USB 3.0. So the 3.0 the is capable of doing 5 gigabits per second. The 3.1 is capable of doing 10 gigabits per second. And the USB Type-C is also capable of doing the 10 uh, gigabits per second. And if we look at the side here, we have a gigabit in Ethernet port. We also have an HDMI port that's capable of doing uh, 4K at 60 hertz. On the other side here, we have a USB Type-C for your power delivery. That's uh, up to 100 watts. And then we also have the other uh, Type-C slot here for connection uh, to your tablet for maybe charging. And this is compatible with pretty much uh, almost anything that uses uh, USB Type-C. Android, Xbox, Windows, Chrome, Mac. So this is pretty much universal. You can use this with pretty much anything you want. And then here we have the uh, NVMe slot just pops off like that and as you can see it can accommodate pretty much uh, any size SSD that you need to put in here. So like I said before this does accommodate uh, the NVMe key M. It can also do the SATA key B, B plus M. The sizes that it accommodates is 2230, 2242, 2260, and 2280. And this is all aluminum. It is very solid. It does not feel cheap whatsoever so you know that you're getting a, a good product that can dissipate heat pretty well. So the way that we put our NVMe in here is you just pull out this little uh, rubber piece. Go ahead and take your NVMe. Make sure you put it in the right way. Pop that in. And then we're going to take our little rubber stopper here. There's a couple different slots on here. The very top one is the one that you're going to put in the slot of the NVMe. So we'll put that in there. And then all you're going to do is push it down into the hole and it stays in place just like that. Then once that's in, you go ahead and take the top and then just clip that down in place. So again, like I said, this is pretty small. I mean, there's the size of my hand uh, and it pretty much fits it. So you can pretty much put this uh, anywhere you'd like. So again, we're going to go ahead and test this out. Uh, on my Mac and we'll see what kind of speeds we can get and we're going to check out all the connections as well. One thing I will say is if you bought the brand new 24 inch iMac depending on which model you purchased you might only get a couple ports. Those, so this would be a perfect addition for that because it'll take up one of those USB uh, C ports but give you a whole bunch of other ports to use especially that uh, SD card slot that you're missing from some of the older Macs. Okay so if you want to hook this up to your computer just make sure you plug in the uh, USB Type-C cable to this port right here. 
Again, if you're using it for maybe your Mac or something like that, you can use the power cable right here and then still just plug this into your computer just as it is. As you can see, I do have my micro SD and my SD card plugged into here and we can test out those speeds. And again, I will be testing out the HDMI and the Ethernet as well. Okay, so before we do the test for the Gigabit Ethernet, I just want to give you a baseline uh, for the cable plugged directly into my iMac before we plug it into the hub. So we'll go ahead and do a test here. I do have fiber from CenturyLink. Okay, so we got 896 down and 885 up. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug the, the ethernet into the hub and we'll do that the same test and we'll see if we get any differences. Okay, so I do now have the ethernet plugged into the hub it's finding the most optimal server, and then we'll do our test. Okay, we still have that one millisecond ping time. So here we have 576 down and 668 up. So let's do this test one more time uh, just to make sure we're getting the most accurate speeds. Okay, so now let's do some black magic speed. Uh, disk speed test for the MVME. Uh, like I said before, the one that's in there is the Western Digital SN750, and it's capable of well over the 10 gigabits that this hub is capable of doing. So if we at least get close to the uh, 10 gigabits, we're doing uh, pretty good. So I'll go ahead and select that drive, and then we will start the speed test here. Okay, so here we got a couple of pretty good samples. We got 912 for a write, 895 for the read, and that is pretty close to uh, the thousand that we're supposed to be able to do. Th that's theoretically, uh, pretty much you're not gonna get that in real world usage just on these speed tests, but that's pretty much on par for pretty much any NVMe enclosure uh, that I've seen that only does the 10 gigabits per second. So I think that's doing pretty well. And the case is uh, pretty hot. <laughs> so if we're getting these speeds with the case being as hot as it is, I think we're doing pretty good. Okay, so now let's do some speed tests for the SD card and the micro SD card. And we'll see what we get there. So go ahead and select the Sony. This is the regular SD card. This is the one that I use with my Sony A6400. So do some tests here. Okay, so here you can see we get about 83 um, megabits for the write and 91 for the read. I believe this SD card is supposed to be able to do uh, 150. Uh, but again, I don't think that this is due to the reader. I think this is just what the card is is giving us. So again, not too bad. It's going to vary for you depending on which card you get. Every card has a different read and write speed, but this is what I'm getting for mine. I can definitely tell you that I get much better write from this hub versus plugging the SD card directly into my Mac. Uh, doing it that way, I only get about 60 uh, megabytes for the write. So now let's go ahead and test out that micro SD card. So this card is slightly less on the write uh, because of the type of uh, micro SD card that it is, but it looks like we're getting 90 on the read, which is pretty good too. So we get about 65 uh, for the write. I just, it just, was gonna do the test again. So about 65 for the write and 90 for the read, and I think that's pretty much on par for uh, the type of card that it is. Okay, so I did another speed test after the last uh, SD card speed test we did on the Blackmagic, and I got 759 down and 931 up. So I'm pretty confident that it's not the hub that's making this uh, fluctuation happen. I'm pretty sure it's just my internet. So 
Again, it's a gigabit uh, ethernet port. I'm pretty sure that you're gonna get close to a thousand megabytes like I did here. So now I plugged in a portable SSD. I plugged it directly into the USB 3.1 port. So we're gonna see what kind of speeds we get with that. Now this is capable of doing the 10 gigabits per second uh, through the USB type C. So let's see what we get through this port. Okay, so here you see you can see I got 850 on the right and 923 on the read, and that's pretty much uh, what you can expect from this, this USB port, and that's really close to the 10 gigabits per second that it's capable of doing. So now let's plug it into the USB 3.0 port and we'll see what kind of speeds we get out of that. That slot's capable of doing 5 gigabits per second, so it should be about half of what we're getting here. Okay, so now we plugged it into the 3.0 port. We'll go ahead and select that drive again, which is already selected, and we'll do our speed test. And there, as you can see, we're getting 414 for the write and 413 for the read, and that's just about half of what we got from the 10 gigabit spot. So again, all the ports seem to be doing what they're capable of. So it seems like all of the ports are pretty much producing uh, what they can. And this is with pretty much everything hooked up. It's pushing a 4K monitor. It has the SD card, micro SD card, Ethernet, and the NVMe all running together off of one hub. And you're still getting uh, these kind of speeds. So here I do have my iMac. It is at full resolution. And then here I have my LG 4K monitor. Uh, being displayed at 4k 60 Hertz and then I also have the little hub down there in the middle as you can see everything is hooked up So now I just want to show you how the power delivery works uh, Through the USB type C PD port. I do have it connected to a wall adapter that is about 90 watts This can handle up to hundred and as you can see the little blue LED is lit up to let you know that it is It is getting power then all you need to do is plug in the little USB type C that goes into this port into your tablet or MacBook or whatever, and it will start to charge. As you can see down at the bottom here, the little battery is displaying the charge connection. So here we are at 74%, and as you can see, the little charging icon is right there. So I'm definitely pleased with what this hub can do. It definitely does what it says it can do, and it does it all in a very small form factor that's pretty light and affordable. Again, it's on Kickstarter. I will be putting a link in the description in case you guys want to pick it up yourself. And if you guys have any questions, please feel free to leave me a question in the comments section below. But other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that little notification bell to let you guys know when I put out new videos. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next one. Later.